Got it? Yep. All right. Good. So Sarah and I have been hard at work and we've built the air powered cart. We can't call it a balloon powered cart anymore because now we've got a compressed air tank. So it's not a balloon that powers it. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna sit on here. Sarah's gonna turn on the tank and I'm gonna go. And before we do this, we should say, do not under any circumstances try this at home. We are trained professionals. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, high five first. Okay, now we do it. Okay, so before I turn the tank on, make sure your feet are down and the brakes are on. Gotcha. Uh, Don't take them off till I say go. You have got it. All right. Ready. Okay. Yeah, it did work, but I feel I feel like it could work better. You want to go faster? I do want to go faster. This reminds me of the rock car. Yeah. Well, we didn't have a big enough balloon. We need more force. We need more force. So should we get a bigger tank? Let's get more tanks. More, more tanks, more force. You're going to go faster forward. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. High five. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, now it's time to max it out. I've enlisted the help of a few more Science Max people. Thank you very much, Corey. You'll see now we have three tanks of compressed gas. And we've also got this nifty little contraption. How does this work, Sarah? All right, so each tank is attached to a tube. Yeah. And you can see that each tube goes into this one main tube. So when we turn them on, pressure's gonna build up and we're gonna go forward with more force. Well, that's great. And Reed is stacking cinder blocks. Thanks, Reed. Uh, up so that will push, uh, the pipe will push against the cinder blocks. And then I'll go that forward. way. All right, well, are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Now, again, I have to say, thank you, Corey, I've got it. This is something you definitely don't want to try at home. We are all trained professionals. We have a physics degree here. We've got TV people that make sure that this is safe. So uh, watch it and enjoy, but please don't try any of this at home. OK, I'm ready. Sarah, count me down. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was awesome! That was really awesome! All right, high fives, high fives! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> and it's raining now, so it looks like we're gonna have to stop. So thank you very much for joining us on Science Max Experiments at Large in our episode on Newton's Third Law. Hey, Science Maximites, I... I... Ah! <laughs> Ugh, slippery, but that's okay because today we're talking about friction. Friction is a force that is everywhere and happens when any one thing rubs against any other thing. We do lots of things to increase friction, like uh, like wear shoes with big treads on them, and we can do things to reduce friction, like the experiment we're doing today. We're gonna build a hover disc, and it's very easy. You take some cardboard and cut it into a circle, just like this. Then put a hole in the middle of the circle. You might want an adult to help you with that. And then take a plastic drink bottle cap like this. I like the ones, use the ones that uh, you get on sport bottles because they have a little nozzle that pops open or closed. And then you glue it around the circle and you get this. Then you need a balloon. So you blow up your balloon. I know you know that step. And then Twist the balloon so it doesn't get away from you. When it's nice and twisted, you can stick it over the drink bottle cap like this, and then untwist it. And this is why I like to use the plastic drink bottle caps that come from sport bottles, because you can open it when you want. And when you do, your disc rides on a cushion of air, reducing the friction with the table, and it's almost like it's sliding on ice. Change your hair? Yeah, 
that's nice. It's like doing this now, but used to be, used to, but now it's, yeah, I like it. You should give me the name of your guy, because I wanted to, hey, oh, hey, how are you? You ever think to yourself, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get anywhere. I can't, I can't get enough traction. Well, you, my friend, need some more friction. Which one of these two shoes has more friction, hmm? Take a closer look. Huh? Huh? Right, bam. This one, this one doesn't have a lot of treads. It doesn't have a lot of friction. But this one, it's got metal spikes on the bottom. This is called a cleat, and the spikes are for helping you grip onto the grass when you're playing soccer or golf, increasing its friction. Why do you think skis are smooth on the bottom? Come on, look at that. It's so smooth and, and glidey. My hand just, I can barely even touch the surface. It just slides right off. It's sort of glidey and smooth. They're smooth to help you glide across the snow, reducing their friction. Why doesn't this box slide down this ramp? Friction. This roller skate has wheels. Wheels reduce friction. But when I push the roller skate, how come it doesn't just keep rolling forever and ever and ever and ever? And going all the way around the world and writing a memoir. Say it with me. Friction, louder. Friction, can't hear you. Friction, a little too loud. Friction, ease it back. Friction. How can I hang onto this rope without falling? Friction. How can I, how can I jump down on the floor without falling over? Friction, and now you know your friction. Your friction, your, your friction, come on. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Uh, Ramona, the friction sign is broken. <laughs> Reset. Uh-oh. With our new heater and lighter materials, our hot air balloon was floating free. That is, until it tipped over. When that happens, all the hot air inside escapes. But Michaela and I have a solution. So we decided to build an even bigger hot air balloon and add a way to keep it upright. So the process aside from that is pretty much the same. We put the end over top of our industrial heater and I will plug it in. Hair dryer again for good measure. <laughs> it's working. It's inflating, but we gotta keep we gotta keep fluffing it up, otherwise it just sort of sags. But you can see the top of the balloon is is definitely working. It's a lot it's a lot bigger than the last one though. Do you think we made it too big, Michaela? <laughs> it's really big. I think it's working. It's definitely working. Uh oh, pull your side. Oh, oh it's totally working. <laughs> I'm so surprised that this works so well. So the stick is gonna keep it balance so the bottom faces down, but Michaela's gonna tie a string to the stick so that when it goes up, we can keep it centered. Okay, this looks good. You wanna let it go? Yeah, are we ready? Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! So let's recap. The hotter air inside the balloon is less dense than the colder air on the outside. And because we were able to get the air hot enough and the balloon light enough, it floats. Science Max, experiments at large. Hot air balloon. Thank you, Michaela. Awesome. That was so cool. Wait a minute, who has the string? Oh, no, ah. oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You see that? Carbon dioxide gas. Our bodies breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Did you see it? Oh, take another look. How about now? No, you didn't see it, right? Because carbon dioxide is invisible unless you freeze it. This is dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide. And this is wet ice. It's not really called wet ice. It's frozen water. Now, you know what temperature water freezes at? Starts with a zero, ends with a, well, it's actually zero, zero degrees Celsius. And this freezes at negative 79 degrees Celsius. It's much colder. I have to hold onto it with a glove because if I held onto it with my bare hands, I get frostbite. So here's the experiment. If I pour some liquid water on the dry ice, will it freeze again? Let's find out.
because the dry ice is so much colder than the freezing point of the water, the water begins to freeze from the bottom up in room temperature air right before our eyes. Whoa, totally frozen. Cool. Cool. Carbon is an atom that is the basic building block of the world as we know it. You, me, you hit myself in the head with a friction sign. That's more of an impact, not friction, really. How can you destroy my life anymore, Set? Huh? 